Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today, today we're doing lots of things. We're going to be working slowly, slowly, slowly towards um, the copper or bronze age. Bronze, honestly, <clears throat> isn't going to happen for a long time, but we're going to work towards it just the same. And also, one of the things we're going to want to do um, is basically work on this foundation that I have uh, acquired, appropriated, um, this kind of ruinous one. Uh, over the next few episodes, it's going to be slowly built up um, into something a bit more homely. Um, <laughs> not for a while though, I gotta say. So the first thing we wanted to do is uh, make some storage containers. I wanted to show off, uh, there are some pretty nice little tools that make clay forming less labor intensive, um, including letting you like copy the last layer and uh and it just kind of auto fills uh you want to keep an eye basically there's a there's a little narrative in this episode um on which pit kilns i make and which ones i actually finish making um i'm gonna I, i'm over the course of this episode i'm going to minimize how much uh, actual resource gathering you see uh, i do want to sort of like show you the pro uh, I forgot I did that. That is the dumbest thing. Um, show, you know, the sort of complete the narrative of like, you know, what are we doing? What, what, what do we need? And like, you know, with this kind of thing, you know, you always see like Tom Hanks uh, start building the campsite and then he's like done, right? Uh, that's not the case when you're like... Uh, actually in this survival situation it's like yeah i want to i want to work on the next thing i need to work on like our our our, uh, our house or something but um yeah it doesn't really work out that way you, you always have to stop and like okay i need some sticks and now i need some grass and now i need some wood and hey i'm hungry look how hungry my dude is right now um so now i gotta go and forage for berries Food is a thing I have, haven't really conquered yet, and um, it's becoming a concern for me, uh, mostly because I know that at day 70, winter begins, and that's when you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of uh, preserved foods, preservatives, well, not preservatives, but pre preserved foods. But over the course of this episode, I'm going to be learning about uh, meal cooking, um, which is, it, it's not as complicated as I thought it was. I, here, I decide that bushes on the inside of my house would be a good idea. And you know what? I stand by that decision. Um, meal, meal cooking isn't as difficult as I think it is, but it's still pretty complex. It's more complex than I thought. So here's our, our first rift. I didn't know what a rift was, um, and I wasn't sure. I was I was worried it was a temporal storm, but it wasn't. But I decided uh, for science I would stand inside of it and see what happened. And we can see that the gear at the bottom middle is spinning like a madman. Um, so uh, there's a whole temporal mechanic in this game. This game it has some uh, eldritch and, and uh, Lovecraftian influence, which is interesting. It, it feels like a weird or almost a dissonant mashup of themes. You have this very realistic, um, kind of rustic, uh, survival simulator almost, um, combined with eldritch and, and Lovecraftian themes and weird creatures and, and almost a horror-like aspect. It's very strange. It's a very strange mashup of, of, uh, themes, but I don't dislike it. It, it really, it feels kind of good to be afraid again of, of the, the wilderness. There was a time in Minecraft, as I've said, where I felt afraid. And that time kind of came and went. I mean, even when you're being chased down by like several zombies and creepers, it's still, you know, the edge is not there. In this game, the edge is here. I, I uh, you know, look into a dark cave and uh, I hate to think what is there because I, I simply do not have the level of tools and preparedness that I do in Minecraft. So here I learn about making rope, 
Um, and that's going to come back much later, much, much later. But I, I made it here in the hopes of making a bow. That'll come back later as well. But um, apparently I need a specific trait to make a simple bow, which is what I tried to make. Can't make a simple bow. Instead, I'll have to make a crude bow. Here I am trying to make meal working work. It doesn't really. Um, this is, there's going to be a lot of bumbling in this episode around meal working. I thought I... I, I you know, try and make water happen. I was hoping I could make soup recipes, but it does specify that you need bucket. Instead, I make a uh, water jug or whatever you want to call it. This isn't necessarily useless. I will eventually need this for something like farming, but um, it's not really useful to me now. It did, however, soak a lot of time. So instead of meal cooking, I opt instead to cush our, uh, cush? cook our, our bush meat. It is bush meat that I got from um, some whatever, and bush meat is uh, not suitable for cooking meals with, which I, I disagree with. It's the first thing I think in vintage story that I felt kind of... Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. I think that there should be meals you can cook with with uh, bush meat. It says it's not nutritious enough, and I kind of understand that. But I feel like the the thing you would want to do with bush meat more than anything would be to uh, basically long and slow cook it into something a little bit more edible, um, or or possibly turn it into jerky or something. I don't know. I don't know if um, drying meat is something in this game. I think it should be, and usually when I think something should be in this game, it is. I have, however, discovered some bizarre omissions from this game, including fishing. Fishing is not a thing. You would think, if anything, fishing would be a thing. At least I haven't discovered it. I tried looking up a crafting recipe for a fishing rod, and I couldn't find one. But maybe it is in there somewhere. Also, there are no traps or snares. Again, I, I, maybe I'm missing them. Maybe I haven't found them, but not there yet so here we are making some crocs uh i believe when i made these i really did think that they were crucibles um you may have noticed if you're paying super close attention that i did make crucible uh clays uh, cr clay crucibles at one point and did i finish the the pit kiln on those i don't know i i don't know you tell me special points if if you spotted that as if it matters so here we're finally um starting to work on this uh ruin now someone did in my comments say uh thank you for for letting me know i I'm, I'm nice to see that there are other fans of this game that if you dig under a ruin uh you'll find some extra goodies uh so we did in fact find a goodie it was a, a pot full of wheat or flax flax uh, grain um, which is, you know, just good for eating, uh, not particularly interesting, and also bone matter. I don't know, is it bone dirt or something? Um, so that prompted me to get into panning. Panning is a thing we're going to be doing a lot, but it, it, it suits me just fine that we would start with the bone matter. Um, so when you pan bone matter, you get specific interesting things, little little goodies here and there. Uh, later, I opt instead of uh, panning the bone matter, I, pa I pan the uh, uh, some clay gravel. Clay gravel is very important to pan because it's going to help us get some copper nuggets. Um, yeah, copper nuggets. Copper is going to take a long time. Oh yeah, there's there's me crouching down to, to uh, cut a, a stray animal I found. But uh, it turns out crouching in water is what puts out your torch. And I'm pretty sure I do that at least one more time before we're done here. So yeah, going, going through the, the bone matter that I, I did discover from our ruin, we do manage to collect a few goodies. Nothing really significant as far as I can tell. Um, but something, mostly bones, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, bones are going to become important later. Um, but for now, they're just another thing kind of taking up more inventory space, which will lead us to needing another storage vessel, which uh, will probably happen in this episode. Along with trying to find copper, we're also going to want to make some charcoal. Charcoal cooking is one of those things that it's, it's a little bit time consuming and uh, you kind of want to get it started, I think, probably as soon as possible. Um, you, you can't basically, you can't just throw copper into a fire and hope for the best. You can't smelt it like that. You need to get your fire temperature up. The way you get your fire temperature up is by 
um, using charcoal instead of uh, regular firewood. So how do you make charcoal? Well, basically you put a bunch of firewood into a pit like this. Um, it can be basically any dimension you want so long as it's square-ish. Um, honestly, you can do rectangles as well, so it's, it's fine, it's whatever. And then you put a fire uh, pit on top, not a pit kiln, a fire pit, on top um, and then seal it completely. You wanna make sure the whole thing is sealed. There are no pockets around it. And then uh, it'll tell you that it is a charcoal pit. Uh, here we are collecting some claystone gravel so that we can pan it later. Um, and once it's sealed and on fire, um, you'll see it kind of smoldering. It'll smolder a little bit and then uh, over the course of basically 24 hours, it will turn that firewood into charcoal. Charcoal is gonna be super, super important and we're gonna need a lot of it. Here I get almost, well, I'm not completely mauled. I, I have died at least like once by foxes. They're, they're honestly no joke, which is uh, can, can be kind of a bummer to die to, to a fox, but. Um, so here we are making our second storage vessel. We definitely wanna have way, way, way more inventory space inventory uh, and, and item management becomes kind of an issue and I, I struggle a little bit in this episode along with you know trying to feed ourselves we uh, I, I now have kind of a rule if I go out to explore I should at least bring back enough food to feed myself for the for the day to make up for that exploration so you can do that in a few ways but I usually opt for cutting down cattails uh, if you cut them down completely you'll get cattail roots which you can then um, turn into or you can cook them and they'll they'll provide you with some minor nourishment so here we are we make the um, fire pit on top of the uh, firewood and then we light it on fire and then we seal it up and it says right there if you saw it there for a moment it'll say charcoal pit at the top and you got to make sure you seal it and, uh, and then it'll eventually turn into charcoal. And we will see the results of that in this episode. So here we, we do a bit of exploration. I have um, up until this point kind of mapped out a small portion of the world around our base. Um, it's a good thing to do that. I mean, you wanna explore at least the local surroundings um, because you know you wanna make sure you know where all the bushes are if they're you know a, a nice portion of bushes i mean i've brought quite a lot of bushes to our place but i've discovered that that's not super viable they take too long to re um ripen for it to really be worth having them near your home you may as well just kind of you know put a mark on the map where they are and check on them when you do um, some kind of uh, exploration or, or mission for some goodies or resources. So we needed more clay. Uh, here I finally notice the pit kiln that I, I didn't finish. Um, and uh, I, I believe those were crucibles. And I, like, if you're noticing, I was actually going to the, you know, I, I actually gathered some clay in order to make some crucibles without realizing that I had already made the crucibles and put them in the pit kiln and uh, just never finished them. So we finally have crucibles. Uh, crucibles are gonna be what we use to smelt copper with. That's gonna be a whole process probably in the next episode, but we're gonna need more copper to do so. You can find copper in the overworld just kind of laying around. And I realize later when you read the guide, it says um, copper nuggets on the, uh, on the surface indicates a vein underneath. So if you do find them coppers, you're going to want to mark them on the map. But that's going to do it for this episode. That's quite a lot of stuff done. And uh, we'll continue working towards smithing uh, towards the copper age and also um, towards an actual livable home. But also the monsters are coming and uh, that's going to be a whole thing. If you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.